Hello everybody and welcome back to All The Mods 9. In the previous episode we set up a power system and upgraded it up to I believe the Emerald tier. Uh, I don't quite remember what the name of that tier is. And we also went ahead and got started with the Hostile Neural Networks mod. I always uh, struggle a little bit with the name of that. And we ended up actually automating Piglet Hearts. Now, in between episodes, I did actually take down the uh, the Hostile Neural Networks mod uh, sort of setup that we had uh, because I wanted to actually get organized a little bit more with our storage. Pretty much since I built the AE system, it's kind of been a little bit in a less than functional state. Uh, basically, between every single clip, I was trying to reorganize my uh, my inventory. My backpack was just completely full of stuff. And the reason for that is actually the default discs don't hold items in the same way that refined storage system discs do. They're limited to only 63 types of items. So even if you build these uh, 256 versions, they can still only hold 63 different types of items. So honestly, it really wasn't working for me. Uh, so what I did, was actually uh, dig into the AE Additions mod and built the 256 ME disk drive. And these are actually deep item storage disks. And it does say storage for dummies because yeah, it is um, a lot easier. It's a lot more similar to how refined storage uh, storage works. So for example, this one has 771 items. Those are just different types of items that I've put inside of the disc. And that's mostly like uh, miscellaneous things, like smaller items where I have like maybe only one or two of the items. So yeah, that has definitely helped out a lot. Um, I also built out these framed drawers, which is pretty cool. Uh, these are exactly the same as regular drawers. I've I used them in the past a few episodes before I even built the space station, I got rid of them. Uh, the reason I built them up again is honestly they look pretty cool. Uh, that's the first reason. Uh, second is it will free a little bit of space up from our discs and it'll actually allow me to control the amount of these larger stacks of items that I have. Uh, so for example, the polished blackstone bricks here, um, I just have a diamond upgrade. So the max that we can ever store is gonna be 50,000. Anything after that, the void upgrade will just go ahead and completely delete any excess items rather than taking up another slot in our storage. Um, I still have a few things here and there, like a couple of these that I need to um, actually fill out. It is a little bit annoying uh, pulling out items from the storage. It is a little bit better in applied energistics because you can just pull it out directly from the terminal and then put it back in. Whereas in refined storage, you have to put it in a separate container, pull out every single item, and then put it all back in. Uh, let's see here. We also have a couple of um, armory cabinets hooked up now. Uh, this is the one that I was using with refined storage, so I just went ahead and hooked it up. I have a second one here. It hasn't been used yet, um, but once this one fills up, I'm not exactly sure how many items the armory cabinet can hold, but... Once it fills up, we'll have extra room for our non-stackable items. And sort of temporarily, I do have these uh, netherite barrels up here. Uh, these are basically the lowest priority in our system. Uh, what these are going to be doing is holding a lot of sort of miscellaneous items. And these will probably only be used after this disc fills up. So... And also, I did move the crafting terminal over to the side. I really did not like it in the center. And yeah, we have our controller here in the center now. And we do have some of these smart cables. And what these do is they show the, uh, the, the amount of channels that we're using in our applied energistic network. So where our uh, terminal is, we're only using three channels. But where our storage is, we're using seven out of eight channels. Uh, so yeah, we will definitely have to upgrade this if we want to add anything else. But I think we should be good on storage for now, um, especially now that I discovered these discs. So uh, yeah, overall this floor of the base is looking a lot better now. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely glad I spent a little bit of time working on that. 
Also, while I was working on all of that, I did actually make an unobtainium all the modium alloy ingots that cooked up for a while. Um, I did upgrade the energy cables to spirited. And yeah, I have this limited to 30,000. Otherwise it was using, I think all 100K or something that we had in the network so we couldn't use our storage system. So what I wanna do today is actually get started with the mystical agriculture mod. This is gonna be a little bit of a step to the side from what we've been doing, but we have been running pretty low on resources and I figure that mystical agriculture is going to be the best way to completely automate anything that we might need in the future. So if we go ahead and take a look at the quest log, we can see that we can make different types of seeds for different types of materials. For example, we can make wood seeds and this will actually allow us to create all the different types of wood. But yeah, we get this wood essence from it and the wood essence can be kind of configured in different ways and even mixed with nature essence to create all of the different types of wood. So where I want to start building out our mystical agriculture structure is actually in the beyond. Uh, if you'll recall, the beyond is, as you can see, a completely empty dimension. This will allow us to stay in a pretty lag free zone as we're sort of building out a lot of our different farms. And yeah, I do want this place to be pretty much our farming zone. So I think to just sort of plan things out for a bit here, I want this chunk right here to be sort of a central zone that doesn't have any farms inside of it, but sort of allows us to get to all of the different farms. So I'm just gonna place the waystone back down here and I'm actually gonna call this the farming zone maybe? I think that's a decent enough name. And that'll just allow us to know exactly uh, which area we're going to. And I do want to move this all the way up. And now I think we're actually ready to at least get started with making Inferium and getting our Inferium seeds. Now the quest does say that I have Inferium seeds, but I guess I just don't have them. Uh, so what we'll need to do is just craft some really quick. And these are just crafted with Wheat Seeds and Inferium and 64 should do for now. We'll also need a decent amount of Inferium farmland and this is basically a way to speed up the growth of Inferium and pretty much any crop that's placed on top of it. And we'll probably want some of these Inferium growth accelerators as well. Basically if you put this below a farmland block uh, it'll speed up the growth of the plant above it. Uh, so what we need for this is Inferium Gemstones, which just made with Inferium and Prosperity. And these Prosperity Gemstones are just made with Diamonds and Prosperity Shards. Really shouldn't be too bad. We can make 64 already. Let's upgrade those into Inferium Gemstones. Placing more in there. Finally, if we can find the recipe. Uh, not that one. Here it is. And we're only doing 64 for now. Uh, we'll probably need more. I need to sort of calculate how many we're gonna need in a chunk. So what I wanna do is kind of get a little bit of a border placed down around this. Each of these side chunks is going to hold a farm and we'll just start placing our Inferium farmland down and see how many this is actually going to. Okay, we're, uh, we're definitely gonna need a lot more than that. Um, I also need to bring in some water as well. All right, and I think that that looks pretty good for now. It's probably not the most efficient layout, but it'll do for now. And now I just wanna start getting our seeds in place. And Inferium is actually sort of this mod's basic resource. So we are gonna need a lot of this. So for the other resources, we'll probably not need as big of an area. Uh, but we will need it for our Inferium. All right, and last up is going to be the growth accelerators. And whoops, I just placed a lot of dirt there. Um, yeah, the growth accelerators will speed up the growth of the crops. So we need to make sure these are placed directly under the farmlands and nowhere else. All right, and now that we have our growth accelerators in place, everything is definitely growing a, a lot faster now. So what we need to do now is actually to be able to automatically harvest it. 
To do this, it's pretty simple. We're just going to need a harvester. Uh, we are going to need solium ingots and diamond scythes for this. Now, solium ingots, I don't think are going to be too bad. I believe you get the solium dust from the nether. Uh, so if you haven't gotten it yet, just check in the nether. Machine frame is pretty easy as well, as are the diamond scythes. Now, you can actually use the diamond scythes themselves if you... Uh, you're not really ready to automate yet, but we, uh, we're definitely at the stage where we should always be automating everything. So I'm going to place this actually on the slab here. And the first thing that you'll notice is that we are going to need power. And I'm just going to put the power beneath. I believe that the flux points can be waterlogged. Uh, yep. Just need to fill in the gap there. And we'll do this on all of them. We are going to make... Four of them, I believe. Uh, we might actually only need two. By default, the harvester can only harvest in a 3x3 three three area. But we do have access to the machine upgrades, and these should actually allow us to increase the uh, radius that the harvesters are able to harvest in. Making the upgrade bases are pretty easy, and we should just need to have these. Now, uh, the Inferium ingots are crafted with the Prosperity ingots, and Inferium Essence, really not too bad. That should allow us to upgrade at least to the, uh, if we make the right amount, uh, to the Inferium Machine Upgrade, which will increase the radius by one. So the way we're gonna actually automatically get all of the Inferium inside of our system is by using Ender Chests from the Ender Chests mod. These allow you to use a custom, almost a code, in order to actually uh, move items across like dimensions and anywhere that you really need them to go. And yeah, it does look like we will need a pipe for this. So uh, yeah, we'll need that in order to automatically put the items inside the chest. And back within the, uh, the station, what we're gonna do is actually, first off, break this facade there. Uh, we'll place that there, I suppose. Put the storage bus back down. That and... Ooh, I'm not actually sure if these can be in the same area. Okay, they can. Nice. So we have a import bus here on the, uh, on the side of this ender chest. And that'll actually automatically import items into the storage system. And because we have the chest here... Uh, this is hooked up to the same three-digit code that the uh, that the other chest is on, so any items that get put into the other one automatically get put into this one. And by the way, before I get too far into this, I am going to remember to chunk load this so that this continues to work as we're sort of in other areas. So now that we have this one completed, I'm actually going to go ahead and build three more of these, and that should allow this entire field to be harvested. Right, and I just went ahead and let this run for a little bit. Um, I did complete these, but I did realize uh, they only actually harvest on the front side. So that is a little bit, uh, a little bit unfortunate for us, but I do think once we get our harvesters upgraded a little bit higher, we should really only need one per field. Yeah, it is a little unfortunate, so we'll just have to deal with it for now. All right, so in order to actually create the different types of seeds, we're actually gonna need an infusion altar. And this is a very simple recipe. Uh, we're just going to need some red wool specifically, gold ingots, and stone, and that allows us to craft the infusion altar. We're also going to need the pedestals, which will actually surround the altar. And as per usual, I'm out of wool, but hopefully the mod that we're getting into now will actually allow us to have a pretty much infinite amount of that. All right, so now that we have our infusion altar and our pedestals, I want to find a decent place for this. I think doing it somewhere here in the middle is probably going to be best. Uh, because this is a chunk, it's going to be uh, it's going to be off center. Uh, let's just throw it over here for now and see how that looks. Uh, when you place it, it does actually uh, have these sort of uh, phantom blocks, which is pretty nice. Uh, I think I want to move it one to the left. Where I think they were there. Uh, one 
One to the right. <laughs> right there. Yeah, that should do. Alright, so we can go ahead and place down our pedestals. And here we are. And we're probably not going to use this right away, but what I do want to do now is actually make the infusion crystal. This will allow us to actually upgrade our inferium into prudentium. And here we go. So yeah, this will allow us to basically craft our inferium into the next level. All right, so uh, yeah, let's test this out. If I go ahead and place four inferium there, it will produce one prudentium. Here we go, and we can create a couple stacks of this. Now we do have a ton of inferium just from mining, and I think from our mob farm also got us a lot of inferium as well but I don't want to use it all right now, just in case we need some Inferium for later. But what I do want to do is make some Prudentium ingots. Let's make sure we have Essence in there. And now we can actually take the Inferium machine upgrades that we had already crafted and upgrade those into the next tier. So we'll go ahead and place everything in the terminal and pull these out. So this will actually speed up our harvesting speeds, our usage of our fuel, it'll be a little more efficient, uh, triple the capacity, but the thing I'm looking for is that area plus two. That's going to improve everything to basically work as intended, although we will still be missing the ones that are behind uh, here. But in theory, these should start harvesting the ones that are sort of on the outside. It looks like it might not be quite yet. I need to give it a minute. Ah, here we go. Yep, it's uh, it's doing this line here. So we probably need to upgrade it once more to get to the outside there. And how do we upgrade it once more? Well, we need to make the Prudentium Infusion Crystal. We need to use our old Inferium in, uh, Infusion Crystal and we can upgrade that. And what this will allow us to do is actually convert our Prudentium into the next tier, which is Tertium. By the way, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing all of these correctly. Uh, I'm not really sure where the names come from. I think they're Latin or something. I'm, I don't really know. And we can quickly claim our rewards here. And one thing to note about the upgraded Infusion Crystals is that they actually can't do the previous craft. The only way to do that is to completely upgrade this, but we're not quite there yet. All right, and once more, we're going to upgrade our machine upgrade to the tertium tier. And this is 2.5 times operation speed, uh, six times fuel usage, four times fuel capacity, and plus three area. That should allow us to harvest pretty much everything that we have here. All right, so the last thing that I want to do is to actually apply what we've made so far. Pretty much all we've done so far is just make essence to make more essence. So now what we need to do is actually apply that and create new seeds. And because I've been running out of wool a lot recently, what I want to do is actually make sheep seeds. So what we need for that is actually soul jars. Now these will actually allow us to capture a mob and then we can use that mob in order to create the essence. So we'll need soul glass and solium ingots really shouldn't be too bad overall. We will need soul dust though, which is a bit of a needlessly complicated uh, recipe as far as I can tell. We'll need a uh, soul stone, which can be found pretty much anywhere uh, throughout the nether. And we need to smelt the soul stone into smooth soul stone. And then we can uh, craft that down into the All right, so now we just need to make the soul extractor. This will actually allow us to basically convert certain items into essence, which can then be put inside of these soul jars. The soul extractor is pretty easy. We're just going to need solium daggers, which are just made with solium ingots. And here we have it. And I guess I'll just place this back over here. It doesn't really matter where we place it, but we will need power for this. And so yeah, here we go. We need to place these soul jars inside of the right side here. Then we'll put raw mutton over here. 
This will begin to extract the essence of the sheep and put it inside of the soul jar. You'll notice on the right side it does say one out of eight. I believe that mutton will fill half of a, yep, a half of a segment each time. So this is going to be a little bit of a long process. But to save us a little bit of time, we can actually put a machine upgrade inside. And look at that, we already filled up our first soul jar. Next up, we'll need to do three more. All right, and that is our last soul jar completely filled up. And now we actually need to use the infusion altar. We're gonna need our four soul jars, four prudentium essence, and a solium seed base. Now this is pretty simple. It's just gonna be prosperity seed bases mixed with solium dust. Uh, we haven't actually talked about the prosperity seeds yet, but this is pretty simple as well. It's just four prosperity shards mixed with a regular wheat seed. All right, and we now have everything that we need for our first infusion craft. So I'm gonna go ahead and place these soul jars in the corners here. Can't remember if it actually requires a specific pattern or if it's a little more loose as long as you have the items inside. There we go, all of our essences in place. And now for the Solium seed base. And one thing I forgot is you do need a redstone signal to get started. Uh, so I'm just gonna place a redstone block below and you can see it's already starting and it's already finished. Uh, we sort of missed it, but that's all right. Here is our first seed. It's in our uh, inventory here. All right, and I think for now, I'm just gonna place it down with the rest of the Inferium seeds. Um, we'll probably have its own spot for it later, but for now, that should do. So the Sheep Seed will actually produce Sheep Essence, which can then be used to craft wool. So soon we'll actually have a way to automatically get wool without the need for any sort of really laggy mob farm that uses sheep to get wool. So yeah, this is gonna be a lot more efficient overall. But I do think that that's where we're gonna end things for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.